Oh my god, what happened to my voice? I guess it's all the hydrogen that I have been inhaling. Let's try this again. One, two, three, one, two, three. Up. Alright. Let's talk learning about acids, bases, and salts. What's up, my lovely little learners? This is the second part of acids, bases, and salts. If you want to watch the properties and learn about the properties of acids and bases, please click here. And today we are going to be learning about the chemical reactions that acids go through. You need to keep in mind five reactions that we have. The first one up that we are going to be doing is how acids react with metals. You can see I have a magnesium ribbon over here. I've cut it into small pellets and I have some acid here. Let's check whether that's an acid. Never take my word for anything. So let's put in the universal indicator. We can see there's a color change and that's an acid. Right? I'm going to keep this inside. The reaction gets quite hot. Over here I have a water bath. So I put this magnesium inside the HCl and immediately you can see some gas is coming up. This wants to directly go up indicating that the gas is a lot lighter than the atmosphere. And if I put a flame next to it, you hear the pop sound. That is characteristic of the hydrogen gas that comes out. But this doesn't allow me to collect the hydrogen gas. So I also have a setup over here which we can't do indoors unfortunately. So we're going to go outdoors, do this. I have a lot of magnesium in this balloon and I have some hydrochloric acid in this conical flask. Let's just release the magnesium. You can see that the hydrogen gas is filling up in the balloon. Let's just give it some more time. Alright, I think that's done. So I'm going to go remove the balloon. Uh, although we collected a lot of hydrogen in the balloon, never do this experiment at home or at like your friend's home. All the experiments we do over here, I encourage you to try it out. But what happens is when we are mixing an acid and a base, a lot of the fumes that come out are actually acidic. They're hydrochloric gas. When they go inside, they're extremely corrosive. So do not breathe in. Uh, you can breathe in a hydrogen balloon, a helium balloon, but just buy this off the market. Do not breathe it in if you have made the hydrogen or the helium. So we just saw hydrogen gas being released in the experiment that we performed. Uh, what we had was a metal react with an acid. Uh, so when a metal reacts with an acid, we get a metal salt and hydrogen. When you name the metal salt, it depends on the metal and it will depend on the acid that you reacted with. So in our example, we had magnesium and hydrochloric acid, which is HCl. The magnesium reacts with the chlorine in the hydrochloric acid to give you MgCl2, which is magnesium chloride and hydrogen. If I react uh, iron, uh, ferrous with uh, hydrochloric acid, I get ferric chloride. If I react zinc with hydrochloric acid, I get zinc chloride. Similarly, the cations, chloric part will change if my acid changes. So if I'm doing these reactions with sulfuric acid, for example, zinc plus sulfuric acid will give me zinc sulfate. Magnesium plus sulfuric acid will give me magnesium sulfate. So remember, metal plus acid gives you the metal salt and hydrogen gas. Alright, so the next reaction that we have is an acid with a metal carbonate. We can see that I have calcium carbonate over here and I have some hydrochloric acid. I have filled in the calcium carbonate in the balloon. So I put this on top. There we go. Calcium carbonate is CaCO3 as you can see. This has a lot of carbon dioxide in it. So the gas inside my balloon right now is carbon dioxide. We have a lot of carbon dioxide. Uh, it also has an extra oxygen. So this reacts with the hydrogen, gives us H2O and we have a metal salt. When we have an acid react with a metal carbonate, we get the corresponding metal salt. Remember your formula for the metal salt will come from the 
acid that you are using and the metal. So we have a metal salt, we have carbon dioxide and we have H2O formed. Alright, so the third reaction that we are going to learn about is how acids react with their arch enemy anti-acids or as we know them bases. I have an acidic solution over here to test that. We are going to put it in blue litmus and you can see it turns red. So we have an acid over here. What I will do now is I will add in a few drops of phenolphthalein. What I am essentially going to try to do is a neutralization reaction. When I add acids to bases, the cation of the acid reacts with the anion of the base to give us the salt. So we have a corresponding metal salt and we have water. So acid plus base gives you salt and water which is neutral. So I have an acidic solution over here and I'll slowly add a base. You can see as soon as I put the base in, it gives me a pink color but the solution isn't completely basic. So I just keep adding a few more drops. You have to be really careful when you do this because just one or two more drops makes the entire thing go pink. We are looking for a very light pink. All right, We can see that the pink is lingering for longer and longer which means that the solution is not as acidic anymore. Still need a little more base. Now we have a light pink solution indicating that it's been neutralized. The solution is however slightly basic. As I put it into the acid, I have slum acid over here. You'll see this color just disappear. Uh, so for example, if I have sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4, this combines with sodium hydroxide. It gives you sodium sulfate and H2O. If I have hydrochloric acid, which combines with calcium hydroxide. So I have the calcium salt, calcium chloride and water. Metallic oxides and non-metallic oxides will have opposing natures. So first let's try to understand their nature, what nature they have before we get into the reactions that they get into. So here I have a metal. If I burn it, it combines with the oxygen in the air and gives me a metallic oxide. This is magnesium. I have a magnesium ribbon. Burning it will give me magnesium dioxide and magnesium oxide. I'm going to try to light this. And you can see magnesium burns with a very bright flame. That's my crucible. So I have over here magnesium oxide. I could directly put my litmus inside, but we know that acids or bases do not show their properties until and unless we put in a little water. So I have some water that I'm going to put here. Mix this. And let's see what happens if I put a red litmus. You can see that it turns blue, indicating that a metallic oxide is basic. So if you want to understand the reaction of a metallic oxide, that is a basic substance with an acid, it basically just gives us salt and water. So remember, a metallic oxide with an acid will give you salt and water. So we just saw that metallic oxides are acidic. What I have over here is dry ice which is nothing but the solid form of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is the oxide of carbon which is a non-metallic oxide since carbon is a non-metal. We are going to see how carbon dioxide behaves in a basic solution. So I have some sodium hydroxide over here. I pour that into my water. And then I put in some phenolphthalein. So I have a basic solution over here and as I put in carbon dioxide which is the oxide of a non-metal or non-metallic oxide, this has an acidic nature. 
As I start putting this in, you will see that it neutralizes the solution. The deep pink slowly becomes lighter and lighter till it's clear again, indicating that the solution is now neutral or acidic. So metallic oxides, just treat them as bases and non-metallic oxides, just treat them as acidic. So we did five sorts of reactions today. When we combine a metal with an acid, we get the corresponding metal salt and hydrogen. For example, if I can combine magnesium with hydrogen chloride, that gives me the metal salt of magnesium, which is magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. The upward arrow there is to symbolize that it's a gas. Zinc along with the same acid will give me zinc chloride. Potassium will give me potassium chloride. If I change the acid, however, the anions of the salt change. Potassium along with sulfuric acid will give me potassium sulfate. Zinc with the same acid will give me zinc sulfate and magnesium will give me magnesium sulfate. Next up, we have metal carbonates. Metal carbonates, as you can see, have an extra CO3. This gives me enough oxygen to convert my hydrogen into an H2O. It also gives us carbon dioxide. So if I have magnesium carbonate reacting with hydrochloric acid, it gives me my magnesium salt, which is magnesium chloride, H2O and carbon dioxide. Zinc carbonate along with hydrochloric acid will give me zinc chloride, H2O and carbon dioxide. Potassium along with hydrochloric acid will give me potassium chloride, water and carbon dioxide. Again, if I change the acid, I get different salts. For sulfuric acid, I'll get potassium sulfate, zinc sulfate and magnesium sulfate respectively. The next three sorts of reactions that we have are basically neutralization reactions. The only thing you need to know over here that an acid and a base give you salt and water. We consider non-metallic oxides to be basic. So non-metallic oxide and acid gives you salt and water. Metallic oxides are considered acidic. So metallic oxides along with the base will again give you salt and water. Please remember your salts come from your acids and bases correspondingly. Okay, finally before we wrap up acids and bases, I wanted to show you how to dilute an acid. We have some water over here and I have some acid over here. This is not exactly concentrated sulfuric acid, it's quite diluted already. Uh, I still want to show you that the reaction is an exothermic one when we mix the two. Uh, that the mercury in the thermometer rises and the right way to do uh, to dilute an acid if you wanted to do it. So we take the water, we are careful as to mix the acid into the water and not the other way around. This happens because uh, acids have a higher density so they go and sink to the bottom. If you put water, it will float, it gets really hot like it's an exothermic reaction and it may cause splashes. Uh, let's actually see the temperature before we put it in. So right now I can see that it is about 27, 28 degrees. I put it in and we slowly put the acid such that it does not cause any splashes. The long neck actually helps me avoid the splashes. This process should actually be done with constant stirring. The reason I'm not stirring is, is because this acid is already quite diluted and I don't want to dissipate the heat. Alright, I think that should be enough. And now, if we have a look, the temperature is about 34 degrees. So today we learned about all the reactions of acids and bases, how they react with other chemicals, how they react with each other. We saw hydrogen and carbon dioxide gases being collected. Please write down all the differences you know between hydrogen and carbon dioxide. I'd like to see the answers that you come up with. Uh, if you have any questions, again, please put them in the comment. And if you know how to answer any of those questions that, my, that the students have asked, please answer them. It's the best way to learn, help out others. And I hope uh, the video made it a little easier to understand the chemical reactions of acids and bases. And next time we are going to do salts. So stay tuned for more magic and science.